Praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the King of all kings, the controller of all affairs. He's aware of every single feeling that passes through our hearts and every single thought that goes through our minds. With him are the keys to the unseen and nobody knows them except him. And he's aware of every single thing that is in dry land and all of the things that are in the depths of the ocean. A leaf doesn't move on a tree except that he's aware of it. And a grain of wheat doesn't move in the darkness of the night except that he knows about it. Nothing is wet, nothing is dry, except that it is recorded in a clear book. He is Khaliqu Kulli Shay, he is the creator of everything. And he is Ala Kulli Shay in Qadir, he has power over all possible things. And after praising that individual where, there's not a single person that can ever match his worth. In character or in beauty to ever walk on earth, I envy every rock and tree and every grain of sand that embraced his noble feet or that kissed his blessed hand. As the great Imam al-Busiri rahimahullah ta'ala, he says in his famous poem, the Qasida al-Burda, he says, لَوْنَا سَبَتْ قَدْرَهُ آيَاتُهُ عِظَمًا أَحْيَسْمُهُ حِينَ يُدْعَى دَارِ سَرِّمَمِ He says, were you to mention, just merely mention the marvels and the greatness of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you'd find that just by the mere mentioning of them, it would bring dead bones back to life. So imagine mentioning the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what effect that would have on our hearts. He's the beloved of Allah and he is our beloved Sayyiduna wa Nabiyuna wa Habibuna Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, it's a great honor uh, to be here uh, once again. I just, again, uh, as, as normal routine, just came from the airport, so uh, hence uh, my slight delay. But Alhamdulillah, um, it, it's great to see so many worshippers come, despite, you know, whether it's rainy or snowing. Uh, I'm aware that uh, the, this particular state is it's not known for the rain, uh, but Alhamdulillah, uh, rain is a rahmah. Uh, and when it's torrential like this, then, you know, we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to protect us from uh, any sort of difficulty that, that comes with it. But at the same time, it's always a rahmah. And, and the believer always looks at things with a positive outlet. The believer should always think that there is always a khair in everything. Yani, ajabal li kulli, ajabal li amri mu'min. Yani, such is the affair of the believer. That every single thing that he sees, it's, it's, it's greatness. There's always some greatness in it, alhamdulillah. Uh, I, I actually was thinking, I, I obviously had a, had a flight to catch, and I was just thinking, what do I speak about? And, and, and subhanallah, uh, as, the, as the khatib, as, as mentioned generally before, um, we, we, when, we, when we are living in a society like this, it's a global village, then the khatib is, uh, it, it tends to be aware of the, the issues that are happening around the world now because every, all of the issues are pretty much the same. Uh, as I mentioned probably in the last khutbah that I did a couple of months ago, I said that generally what would happen is the, the khatib, uh, the person who's delivering the Jum'ah, he would be from the local area and he would be aware of every single thing that, that is happening in the local area. And then he would give a khutbah on the basis of what's happening in the area. But now because, because we're living in a, in a day and age of social media, everybody, everybody knows what, what the issues are uh, because the issues are now like universal. So where I'm from in the UK, the issues are the same. And you're going to find, uh, you know, people. Uh, and, and by the way, f from the time of the Prophet sallallahu up until now, the issues have always pretty much been the same. There's always going to be a, a battle of good, goodness and evil. Uh, and that's the way it is. But they can come in different forms. And the greatest and the best of goodness is attaching yourself to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Attaching yourself to the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So whatever difficulty you find yourself in, whatever obstacle you find yourself in, wherever you are in the world, you know that the, the answer will be in the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam or the usul or the principles of the deen that have come down from centuries, 1400 years of tradition that we are proud to be a part of. 
That's where the answers come. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَطِيعُ اللَّهِ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ وَأُولُوا الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنْ تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ That you, you obey Allah, obey the Rasul, and obey those who are in leadership amongst you. And, and of course the ulama have, have discussed what this actually means, but at the very least, uh, on, on, a, on a micro level, we can say the ulama. The scholars that are around us, whatever they say or whatever, whatever they, they tell us, because they have, have the thoughts, they, they have a foresight. Uh, and of course, those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the men of Allah, they have a foresight. They can tell you, look, in, in, in this day and age, we're having these sort of issues. But everybody is aware, right? And if you, if you, if you dispute regarding something, go back to Allah and go back to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For us, go back to the Qur'an al kareem and go back to the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. The ayah that I recited, I actually saw a couple of people smiling. Uh, it's almost like a, uh, an ayah that people don't necessarily like to discuss, but everything in the Qur'an is relevant, it's pertinent, and it's, the Qur'an is timeless. Every single lesson in the Qur'an is timeless. Yani, wherever you find yourself, in whatever day and age you find yourself, Every single ayah of the Quran can be pertinent to you, and on the basis of al ibra li umum al laf, like it's 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 a it, it's a principle in tafsir that you find that you know even on on the generic wording or the meaning, uh, you can find so many lessons uh, from from the Quran al Karim. One of the biggest biggest issues that we find now is this whole uh, you know this this crisis of of gender identity crisis almost. Not necessarily an identity crisis, but in particular a gender crisis. Uh, you know, you find people who, who are saying now that there's more than two genders. And, uh, and subhanAllah, the Quran is very clear. Uh, whoever, man amila saliha min dhakarin aw untha. And there's only two things. Yani you're either a male or you're a female. There's no such thing as this, non, this whole non-binary thing. But you see, that's one issue. And, and, and that's obviously an issue that, that needs to be spoken about in, in probably lectures and, and different khutbahs and things like that. What I wanted to uh, particularly focus on today uh, in the short time that I have is this whole idea of masculinity and what masculinity actually is. Um, and it's probably a topic that's already been spoken about, but very, uh, you know, something that I, I, I've been looking into because, you know, this whole... Uh, the, the red pill movement and you know people are like oh you know what is a what is a man and and people actually assume that a man is someone who looks down on women or speaks against women or uh, you know uh, and and that's not actually what a man is as I said before if you ever have a dispute regarding anything you go back to Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam the real man and the greatest of men is our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And the guidance of, of him, yani his guidance comes from the Quran al Karim directly. And, and when I looked at, at the word rijal itself, which is the, the, the plural of rajul, which means men in the Quran, it comes uh, 27 times in various different forms. And, and, uh, and subhanAllah, sometimes you, 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 you beg to think like, what are people assuming that men are? Like men are those people who are, you know, macho men or those that go to the gym and lift, I don't know how many pounds and, and you think that's a real man. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say a man is? And interestingly, the, with the way in society that we're living in now, people are not, unfortunately, not men anymore. And, and you could say the same thing with women. Women are not women anymore. And the reason is because we, we, we've moved away from the guidance of the Quran al Karim. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about men? What, what does Allah say? Allah says, for example, one of the ayat of the Quran, and I'll move on to the, the ayat that I recite in the khutbah. What does Allah say about rijal? He says, Fihi rijalun yuhibbuna an yatatahharu. And this is a, this is a part uh, of, of a longer verse uh, in, in, in one of the earlier surahs of, of, that were revealed in the Quran. That the men are those who love to purify, purify themselves. And this purification, this, this tahara is not, it doesn't mean like, you know, I have like three showers a day and I'm a real man now. And it doesn't work like that. This tahara is, is more so the, the inner purification. And interestingly, you'll find that in, in, in so many circles now all around the world, like I, I, I deliver courses online, for example. And this is, this is something that was, it really shocked me. Um, and rather didn't shock me, but it's something that it's, it's a common theme. You know, whenever there's a class or there's a course or there's something that, you know, like the ulama come and they say, you know, you should attend, you know, a, a particular course or a gathering or something along those lines. Or, you know, when I'm delivering online courses, for example, why is it that most of the people that sign up are females? 
It's just something that, I, that, that I've noticed. It's just a, a, perhaps it's an observation, and maybe it's an, it's an incorrect observation, but I'm only going to go based upon what I know, right? And what I've seen in my life. But if, over the last two or three years, when, we, when we're teaching, and you, when you find these courses, and you find, like, for example, there'll, there'll be a gathering tomorrow, right? And I know there will be a gathering tomorrow, because, uh, you know, our Honorable Sheikh Samir is here. So there'll be a gathering, and there's going to be a reading of the hikm of Ibn Ata'illah. Uh, but what, you'll probably find that mostly it's women that turn up. Uh, and the reason is because either, well, you can, you can formulate many reasons. Either oh, women don't get the opportunity, so whenever they do find an opportunity, they'll, they'll take it with both hands. Right? But that's not my concern right now. My concern is why is it that you don't, you don't find men turning up to these things? Because men have this intrinsic, intrinsically built ego inside of them. And they think that, oh, we don't need to learn. Oh, we don't need to study. We don't need to develop ourselves. Yes? And, and subhanAllah, this is exactly against what the Quran al Karim is trying to teach about men. Yeah, and, the, and the lesson is for everybody here. Whenever you find an opportunity to improve yourself, then you should go and take that opportunity with both hands. Because فِيهِ رِجَالٌ رِجَالٌ يُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَتَطَهَّرُوا Men are those who love to purify their inner. They love to increase themselves and improve in themselves. And you find many men sitting at home, يعني خلاص, I don't need to do anything. I already you know, make money and I do this and that. And <laughs> some men don't even do that these days. Yeah, But, but the point is, is that what are you doing in order to improve yourself as a man. And, and I, I know some brothers will say, well, why do you speak about women? Right? Maybe that's for another time. Right? But you know, the, the, the society is formulated through you know, these two genders. Right? Uh, they say that if you educate a man, you edu educate an individual. And if you educate a woman, you educate a whole family. Right? But, but the point here is that how many of you are always, and I speak to the men here directly, and maybe women who obviously are responsible for uh, men as, as in like their children, etc, etc. Right? How, many do you, how many men do you find? Or how, many, how many times do you find yourself thinking, I need to improve in X, Y, Z area? And by the way, just praying salah, giving zakat and, and fasting, is not enough. Right? In the Allah, it's enough because these are your fara'id. Yeah? These, these are your obligations that you have to do. But then you may find like people who, you know, they, on the outer, they're manifesting all of these things. They pray their salah, they, you know, they give extra charity, you know, and they come to the masjid every single day, but they go home and they, they will you know, abuse their wives, for example. What, what, what's the reason for that and why is that? And that's why you know, men, men can't even be trusted anymore. And I'm speaking it as very clearly as a man, right? This is, this is the, why? Because they don't love to purify. They don't love to increase and improve themselves. And this is something for all of you to think about at this moment in time. How many, what do you do in the week to improve yourself as a person? Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu arda, he said, and this is also mentioned in, in, uh, in a hadith, different a hadith, narrated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, that a man or a, an individual who has the same day as the previous day he's in loss. That every single day you should be striving to improve because this is the guidance of the Quran al Karim. There are diseases of the heart that everybody suffers from. Myself included, right? Yani uh, riya, showing off, ostentation, kibr, arrogance, yes, uh, vanity, jealousy, envy, these things. Subhanallah. And, and if you read the hadith about these these things that everybody struggles with, but it's that that's not the point. The point is is that what are you doing to work on these things? And now this applies to women as well. What are you doing to work on these things? What are you doing to to, uh, yeah, yeah, you, what are you doing to improve yourself when it comes to these things? The one who loves to improve himself is the real man, according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, kibr. Kibr is a beautiful example, right? A beautiful and ironically, uh, what I mean to say is that the Prophet wasallam has said that the one who even has an atom's worth of kibr, of arrogance, will not enter Jannah. That, that's a very scary thing. Now, what does kibr actually mean? What does arrogance actually mean? That when somebody tells you that you have to improve, right, you deny it. Listen, you should work on yourself in these aspects. Oh, no, no, bro, not, not me, man. Like, you know, I'm okay, man. Right? Every single week you're, you're, you're receiving nasiha from, from an imam, from, a, you know, you should do this or you should do that. Even when it comes to the smallest of things, like you should pray five times a day. Right? And the issue is, is that the real person who is beloved to Allah is the one who is truthful. In fact, in, in, in the hierarchy of who is the most favored, yani, 
أولئك مع الذين نعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين. This is a hierarchy that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives, and it's a direct tafsir of the ayah that we recite all the time: "Surat al-Ladina an amta alayhim." Those whom Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has favored, the Siddiqun are greater than the Shuhada and the Salihun. Now, Siddiqun, according to the Mufassirun, refers to the companions of the prophets. But why? How did a person become a Siddiq? This is the issue. Being truthful doesn't necessarily mean not lying with the tongue. Being truthful means being truthful to yourself. يعني رجال يحبون أن يتطهروا. That I know that I, I I have things to work on. I know that I have deficiencies. And being truthful to yourself means that I know that I have to take action in order to work on these deficiencies. That's a true siddiq. Because somebody can turn around and claim that I've never lied in my life. I've never actually uttered a lie in my life. But that doesn't make you a siddiq. Because a siddiq is the one who doesn't lie, of course, with his tongue, which is obviously something that you're not supposed to do anyway. But the person who doesn't lie to himself, who's true with himself. And the, and the biggest issue that we find is people are not even true to themselves. And that's where kibr can creep in. This arrogance, this level of arrogance can creep in. Because when people tell you that you need to improve or you need to do X, Y, Z, and an imam comes every single week and he says you should do X, Y, Z, and you're thinking, and it just goes into one ear and comes out the other. And in our Zuban, it's a very good thing and it's one Right? It's one of those things. And when we, from the South Asian, if, you're from, if you speak Urdu, right? It goes into one ear, comes out the other. But the one who loves to purif purify himself is the real man. And that's the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. And many, many, many other verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about what the real man is. And by the way, women are also responsible. Because women, and, and, and the cycle is absolutely phenomenal the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this cycle. Women are supposed to obey and serve their husbands. But the cycle is, is incredible because once a woman has a child and the child is a boy or a girl or whatever, then the child who is a man serves his mother. And it's a full cycle. That's the way it works. Right? So, but, but what are you doing to improve yourself? What are you doing to incite another man to improve himself? And that's, some, that's something for you to all think about. And that's the purpose of a Jumu'ah. That's the purpose of a Khutbah. We come here and we, we, we receive reminders. In the dhikra tanfa'ul mu'mineen. Because the reminder is constantly beneficial for the believer. Tanfa'u yani yadullu ala al-istimrar. Yes, constantly beneficial. For, for the believer. That maybe you've heard these things before. You could be sitting here saying, oh, oh, same old yeah, masculinity. <laughs> it's a thing now. Huh? Everybody's speaking about it. Yeah? But it's going to be beneficial if you take heed. And that's why whenever you sit in a, in a majlis or you sit with, with the ulama or you sit in a, in a masjid and you listen to some nasiha, you should come with an empty vessel. Our teachers would say, if you come with a, with a vessel which is full, like I know more, and I don't know what I'm going to say. Yeah, what's he going to tell me? Yes, uh, you know, I'm this old now, I'm 60, 70 years old. Yani, uh, and I'm not obviously, you know, pointing out the elderly only. Yeah, but even if you're 25 and I, I've got a degree. <laughs> yes, I've got a degree. I, I don't need to improve. What's this imam going to tell me? Or what's this person going to tell me? I mean, that's what kibir is. And that's something that we, you know, we should, we should really, really evaluate and reflect on. Sayyid, uh, Sayyiduna Imam Al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, who's one of the greatest... Uh, ulama to ever have lived actually from the Seljuk Empire. He, he, he says that, he mentioned this in his Ihya, he says a, a moment of reflection for a believer is greater than a thousand voluntary prayers. Something to think about. I guess I, I haven't got the time to go into the verse that I actually mentioned, but perhaps another time we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts this from us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to really reflect and think about how we can improve so we can be those people who love to purify ourselves and then those people who become the muhsinun and those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil qur'an al-azim wa nafa'ana wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikri al-hakim innahu ta'ala jawadun kareemun qadimun malikun darru raufur rahim. Alhamdulillah, 
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحاب إجمعين ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم خصوصا على أفضل البشر بعد الأنبياء سيدنا ومولانا أمير المؤمنين وإمام المسلمين أبي بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى عدل الأصحاب المزين المنبر والمحراب الموافق رأيه بالوحي والكتاب سيدنا ومولانا أمير المؤمنين وإمام المسلمين عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى كامل الحياء والإيمان جامع القرآن سيدنا ومولانا أمير المؤمنين وإمام المسلمين عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى إمام المشارق والمغارب أسد الله الغالب سيدنا ومولانا أمير المؤمنين وإمام المسلمين علي بن أبي طالب كرم الله تعالى وجهه الكريم وعلى ابنيه الكريمين السعيدين الشهيدين أبي محمد الحسن وأبي عبد الله الحسين رضي الله تعالى عنهما وعلى سيدة النساء فاطمة الزهراء رضي الله تعالى عنها وعلينا معهم يا أهل التقوى وأهل المغفرة I'd like to just finish off on one reflection um, something which I find is a common problem I was once um, with a friend and just driving uh, with him and uh, I was in the car and I, I was driving and he's like, and, and I was in silence, yani. I didn't put any music on or uh, not to say that it's, it's permissible anyway, we can go into that later on. Uh, but yeah, not even a podcast or a speech or anything like that. And, and he just goes to me and he says, bro, like, do you drive in silence? Like, what's wrong with that? Like, is there something wrong with you? And I said, no, there's nothing wrong with me here, bro. There's, there's something wrong with you. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, because people are scared of their own silence. And this is something that I want to leave you with. You know, people now, they can't go a moment without actually listening to something or even talking to someone, right? But the, the, the greats as we find our pious predecessors, and this is for every single person, whether you're a child, you're old, you're a male or a female or, you know, whatever, the great pious predecessors, we learn from them that a lot of the time they would spend in silence because silence brings reflection. So he thought I was weird because I'm not putting anything on. I actually find peace in that because when I'm, when I'm driving, it gives me time to reflect. The question is, how many, can you even sit in silence? Just an extra prose, it's just people start to think, oh, what's going on here? You see? Why? Because people are scared of their own thoughts. But the question is, can you sit in silence? And when you sit in silence, that allows you to reflect. And it allows you to think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it allows you to think about the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for you. And just something that you should perhaps... You know, bring into your life. Even when we're praying salah, obviously we're not silent and we shouldn't even pray salah silently. Yes, you know that you, you know, people who pray Allahu Akbar and they keep their mouths completely shut and they don't even move their lips. They're, according to the ulama, the prayer is not even accepted. Tayyip, point being is, is that, and rather not accepted, valid. Acceptance is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the point of reflection here before I leave you is that how often do you sit in silence? Can you sit in silence? And if you can't, you really need to start. Whether you're commuting to work, whether you're driving, it's something that you need to think about. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to reflect and be people of reflection. Jazakumullah khayran. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fi al-Quran al-Azim. Wa nafa'ana wa iyaakum bil ayat wa al-Zikri al-Hakim. Udhkurullahi adhkurukum. Wa adu'uhu yastajib lakum. Wa ladhikurullahi ta'ala a'la wa awla wa a'azu wa ajallu wa ahamu wa a'azamu akbar. والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر